Sim racing equipment has vast choices, a variety of technologies, options, brands, mounting choices, you name it. Despite the choice, the biggest limiting factor for most of the sim racing user base, either that be newcomers or experienced drivers, is basically around the budget. In reality, most sim racers will sit on the lower end of this spectrum, no matter how veteran they are. Therefore, having the most bang for the buck becomes essential due to these budget restraints. There are plenty of cheap entry-level options with no first feedback, but oftentimes, for just a little more, there can be far better options in all measurable benchmarks. One of these options is the one I'm going to talk about today, which is the Logitech G29. Firstly, a thank you to Logitech for providing me the wheel for this review. As such, please take my words with a grain of salt. The Logitech G29 is essentially a PS3 and PS4 version of the G920, so if you're looking for this wheel but have an Xbox, most of what I state here will apply on the G920. My first decent wheel was the Logitech G25, a wheel set that to this day I have a tremendous high regard. So it was really interesting to drive it and compare it to my memory, the Driving Force GT we've reviewed early this day, the G25, and of course, the wheel I currently run and still will be on my rig, the T300 RS. Price-wise, it should set you back roughly 180 to 200 pounds, 250 to 300 US dollars, or 230 to 270 euros. This price will move up and down depending on time of year, country, state, and demand but price-wise they should be around these windows. If you want to have the optional shifter and maintain yourself within the ecosystem, add between 30 to 40 of any of the denominations that I've talked about. The second-hand market for these is fairly competitive, mostly having offerings that range from half to two-thirds of the price. Sometimes they are even offered with wheel stands at an extra cost of 20 to 50 percent from the base G29 price, in essence, you can find really good bargains. The wheel that was provided by Logitech did not come with a shifter, so this review will ignore it unless it's relevant. In the package, you will find the steering wheel, a pedal set with throttle, brake and clutch, the power supply and a few pamphlets. The unboxing is rather worthless, so let's go to the specifications. The wheel is described by having a 900 degrees lock-to-lock -lock with all-effect steering sensor, dual motor force protected by overheat safeguards and it's driven by helical gearings. The engine provides 2.2 newton meters after the conging from what all information I could find. There's a total of 14 buttons plus paddles for up and down shifting, a D-pad, a two-way rotary encoder that works as a couple of buttons, so plenty of buttons to assign. There's also a LED rev light set that lights up with most modern titles. The pedals are potentiometer based with a non-linear brake pedal, but more on the brake pedal a little later on. Construction wise, both the wheel and pedal set are fairly well built, the wheel having a hand stitched letter or letterette, an aluminum construction on the rim, while the pedals, having most of the base made of plastics, the pedals themselves are made of steel. In terms of construction, they haven't changed much from the G25. On the base of the wheel, there's a power cord connector, two serial type connectors, one for the pedal, another for the optional gearbox, and also a USB cable. All of them are routed through the back through some ridges. This is for me something that needs to be changed on future wheels, as if something is needed to be done in a part of the setup, the whole assembly needs to be removed. Also, it's very easy to have the cable detached from position during assembly and run the risk of scoring or breaking the cables. So this is something that Logitech could improve on. There's two ways of mounting the wheel. The first one would be hard mounting it or using the two clamps, one on each side. The clamps have risers to attach to thinner tables. After clamp is set in place by torque, it's locked down by pressing the rotors. The pedals can be hard mounted as well or be used in the ground. There's a few rubber pads for slippery surfaces and an optional carpet grip system that is activated by pressing a retainer. I've tried this wheel by using only the clamp holder and much like the Driving Force GT or G25 that I used a few years ago, it was more than enough, though some slippage might occur when the clamps start to wear down. As for the pedals, because of the extra force necessary to press them, compared to the Driving Force GT, the rubber inserts were insufficient. 
So if you are thinking of using this without a wheel stand or a way to hard mount them, consider getting something that avoids the pedals to move or use it over a carpet. I've tested the performance of the wheel in just a few titles, mainly iRacing, Assetto Corsa and Assetto Corsa Competizione. Generally I can say that the performance of this combo is more than acceptable in all departments, especially considering the price tag. Firstly the wheel, it has a decent force and it's fairly fast to move around even for a helical driven wheel, much faster than the driving force in a G25, but it's somewhat slower than all the belt driven wheels. Button position can be awkward as it may be slightly off for thumb reach without releasing the hand from a 3 and 9 o'clock position. All of the four corners of the rim plate suffer from this issue which can be more evident with smaller hands. The button's clickiness is generally okay, but it must be said that the blue buttons, that means the R2, L2, the R3, L3, are fairly strange in terms of movement. They seem to move uh, up, down, left and right. And this is especially noticeable with the lower ones, which are the R3 and L3, which they feel that they can break at any moment. The pedal set is more than competent, you do require a good dose of force to activate any of the pedals, there is good range and sensibility as well. The brake pedal is somewhat strange to quantify as when they say non-linear it feels more like two stages. The first stage is very linear as any throttle pedal until it hits the rubber dampener when it's around 50% of the pressed range and it becomes extra stiff to push down. It does not work as a load cell, but it's somewhat in the middle between a stiff potentiometer pedal and a light load cell. It will definitely take some habit getting used to. Some will see it as a gimmick, though I see it as an improvement over older pedals. Nowadays, there's plenty of upgrade rubbers for the brake pedal, so if you don't like the original ones, either that be from the lack of force required or exactly where the rubber engages, you can change the stock rubber set with no problem at all. The pedal set is very easy to disassemble. The G29 is in a tricky place in the market. If you get it at a lower price range of 100 pounds, 250 dollars, 230 euros or thereabouts, it competes directly with the T150 Pro, which comes with the T3PA pedals. At this price point, none of them come with shifters. If you want to get it, add an extra 30 or 40 of your dollars, euros or pounds, and it will give you access to that shifter. While the Trustmaster ecosystem requires closer to 100 for the TH8A. However, the T150 is smoother and has better force feedback. If you choose to go cheaper, the base T150 is about 20 to 30 dollars US or Euro cheaper, but it comes with far inferior pedals to the G29 or the T150 Pro. But why would you have a 3 pedal set if you're not going to use any shifter at all? It's really a hard decision. To conclude, the G29 is somewhat competitively priced and offers a solid experience with good force feedback, a good pedal set for the price, a solid construction. The wheel has a good number of buttons that can be assigned. The brake pedal probably won't satisfy everyone, but I did like it, but for the price, it's hard to have any better. I believe it's a good buy, though I would also consider the competition if you are looking for upgrade routes. Logitech could make the choice easier by adding the shifter like they used to do it with the G27 and G25 years before, because at this price, the natural competition will be the T150 that offers um, somewhat of an upgrade route if you want to, and offers also a little better force feedback and a much smoother drive. Still, I think if you choose to go Logitech over Trustmaster in this specific regard for this price range, you won't be disappointed. But anyways guys, I hope you have enjoyed the video, I hope you have found it informative. If you did, don't forget to press like, subscribe, share, tell me in the comments what you think about the wheel or your experiences with it, and I'll see you next time.